Welcome to Fenextra. I'm Hannah Wallace, and joining me now is Andrew Columbridis from Accepta, and we're going to be discussing the importance of taking a data-first approach to digital transformation. Hello, Andrew. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Hannah, I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, there's a lot of commentary and activity around digital disruption and intelligent automation. So could you tell me, how are banks moving this forward? I mean, we are seeing you know, incredible pressure on the banks, um, and that's not going away, both from a regulatory standpoint, you know, um, the, the, the drive to do more with less, operational efficiency, mitigating operational risk, um, and, and engaging with clients in a far more effective and efficient manner to make ease of be doing business with banks uh, high on the agenda. The banks have traditionally taken a sort of a, a, a technology-centric um, approach to these transformation programs, mm -hmm. fueled by the prominence of robotic automation software. Um, and those have been successful, but only to a certain extent. Um, that, and that's because they have been hampered by uh, the idiosyncrasies of not having the right data in the right way to be able to replicate the process that they've been asked to do. Where Acceptor is now positioned in that ecosystem of technologies, and it is becoming an ecosystem of technologies having to work together, is by taking, by providing the data backbone effectively, where we're able to consume the data, transform it, normalize it, and then if need be, we can push it into a you know, robotics engine or a reconciliation engine or any manner of technology that can then complete the process um, alongside, alongside Acceptor. Yes, it's certainly an exciting time in this space, but how would you say banks can achieve changing the bank while still running the bank? Personally, and from what I'm seeing uh, in the marketplace, I don't think they have, a, they have the choice. They can't stop doing what they're doing. They don't have the capacity within their organisations to, to move resources over to, to change and run the bank at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I think critically, historically, a lot of the change the bank was seen as a technology initiative and, and those technology resources are very scarce so there was a you know the, the capacity wasn't there and indeed you know there were too many run the bank um, challenges and priorities to actually focus on change the bank yeah. what's actually happening now with tools such as Acceptor where which are configurable by end operations staff so they're 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 the individuals who actually understand the process and actually they're the ones who are freed up from some of the mundane activities when implementing Acceptor. So we're now seeing a proliferation of, of tools such as Acceptor out across all the operational functions where you can actually galvanise you know, your capability and capacity around to be able to configure Acceptor to automate and, and release resources. I think also critically banks are moving away from these very large monolithic programmes mm -hmm. and undertaking short, sharp um, projects for change and automation, which is incrementally releasing more resources but delivering quick results which builds up confidence in these kind of programs to progress through. Finally, Andrew, and arguably most importantly, why is taking a data-first approach critical to digital transformation? You know, I, think, I think we've spoken before around to take, you know, the importance of taking a data-centric uh, approach to the transformation. Um, it is interesting if you look at a lot of um, automation initiatives where they're taking a technology approach, that technology has become very complex. And the reason it's become complex is to deal with the idiosyncrasies of having unnormalized, unstructured, inconsistent data. Um, and that will continue unless you actually deal with the transforming the data before you move into any given process. And indeed, as you transform the, process, the data, you actually transform in the process inherently as well. So if you take a classic example where we're seeing a lot of reconciliation operations in banks that have got some very complex reconciliation technology and, and processes in place. And the reason they're there is they're dealing with the idiosyncrasies where you have a, you know, maybe two feeds of data where one calls a product A and one calls a product A-1. And so they're having lots of rules to deal with that idiosyncrasies. Whereas if you take a data-centric view and you normalize it so you've got a single representation of a product before it goes in to that reconciliation, the reconciliation itself can be far simpler uh, in its own right. So by taking that data-centric view and data-centric approach, you're actually streamlining process, but actually dealing with taking out a lot of complexity in what, in what the banks actually undertake. Andrew, this has been wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hannah. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching.